but it's a rarity to be home midway through a tour, you know? <laughs> so, um, and especially one as gruelling as this, it's been ridiculous, it's been so long. I kept looking at the, the, the laminate being like, how are we still on tour in the UK? <laughs> So my name's Jen, I'm joined by Will from Creeper for the latest in Enemies in Conversation series. Thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you very much for having me. So how have you been? How has everything been going? Oh, it's been amazing. Like, uh, it's been a long time since I've done a tour like this before. Um, I used to tour like this a lot when I was younger. Just do like constant shows over and over again. Um, but this has been, this is like a 20 date tour in the UK. Um, typically you'd only tour like that in the US really, you know, um, you wouldn't do that over here. It's normally like eight shows to, um, to kind of uh, contrast a little bit. The, the Creeper tour in December is seven shows. And this is like over double the Creeper Fair tour. So, uh, so yeah, it's been a little bit of a, um, a back to basics sort of thing. Um, but every day the shows have been so mad and getting to meet people afterwards as well has been really cool. Because uh, often I don't get to do that with Creeper so much because the shows are on a bigger scale, you know? Um, so yeah, it's been it's, it's been amazing. It's been really, really cool. I've, I've really enjoyed myself and it's been a little trip down memory lane so going back to some of these venues that I haven't seen for a long time as well. So doing this tour with Salem, how is it going to prepare you for Creeper? As you say, there have been more dates. Uh, it's the smaller venues, perhaps. But are you now feeling like you're going to be more prepared for these Creeper shows? Because I know we've had the pandemic and all that time away. Or do you think there's such different things you can't really compare? Well, uh, they, are, they are very, very different because uh, this is a much more of a punk rock show. Like, like it, kind of the stuff that I grew up with, these sorts of shows. But, um, Sean from Creeper messaged me midway through the tour and he said, I hope you're getting your st stamina up for, for December. So uh, he said, I feel like it's a good thing you're doing this because, you know, you've been sat around drinking red wine for two years. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, it's been, it's, it's cool like that. It's, it's good. It's definitely good um, to be out getting back to doing what I do, you know, um, and uh, uh, getting back to like performing in front of crowds and, um remembering how things go, you know, like, uh, like in terms of <laughs> yeah. catching my breath and stuff like that, you know, like it's, um, some of the Creeper songs are so high in my range and uh, some of the, the Salem songs seem easy in comparison um, somewhat, you know, which is cool. Um, but yeah, dipping my toe back in like this has been a real nice experience for that. Also like being around people again, Jen, you know, like um, <laughs> I, I, it's, been, it's weird being around so many people. Um, I thought I was going to find it a little bit weird because I did, when we first started going out again uh, after the pandemic, I was finding that a little bit difficult at first. Um, but I've actually found like being on tour really nice. And it's been, we're out with James and the Cold Gun um, uh, as, well, as well. Who You might know James from Holding Absence when he used to be in that band. Um, so hang out with them every day and, and making new friends. That's kind of what touring's always been about for me as well. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting used. I'm, I think by the time the Creeper thing rolls around, I'll have built my stamina back up and also I'll be ready to hang out with a group of people again and not feel weird about it, <laughs> you know? It is, a, it takes a lot of adapting, doesn't it? Because I don't think any of us realise just how used we've got to being at home and our own company and being around groups of people again, it can be quite intimidating, obviously for the fans as well as the act. So it will be nice, as you say, you would have warmed up. Now, with the Creeper tours in the past that you're known for being theatrical, uh, there's been lots of performances and you've had like a runaway bride theme. Uh, on one of the early tours, there was all of the purple neon lights and everything anywhere. Are you able to give us a bit of a clue of what you've got planned for the, the tour coming up? The thing with Creeper is it's always like kind of shrouded in secrecy. And um, we, we use the term kayfabe, which is a, a professional wrestling term. And uh, like in terms of like the Disneyland parks kind of being on stage and off stage and Creeper's always on stage, you know? So I, I'm always very wary about how much I give away with that stuff because um, there, there's an anticipation in the air when we play and we're going to perform as to what we're going to do. Um, the annoying thing about those tours is uh, after the first show, everyone's filmed what you've done and put it on the yeah. internet immediately. So, <laughs> so they ruin it for the next people. Um, but yeah, this is uh, all, 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 all I can say is it's kind of it's, it's some of the most ambitious stuff we've done, um, especially in terms of the drama and the theatrics of it all. Um, we've been doing, uh, we've been teasing a little bit of what we're going to do at festivals over the, the summer. We did obviously Download Pilot and Slam Dunk Festival, um, a few appearances here and there. Um, so yeah, we've got a lot of lot of stuff in mind in terms of uh, what we're, we're going to try and intend on doing. It's also like the most amazing 
support package we've ever had, I think. Um, we've got Static Dress opening up, who are probably one of the brightest prospects in the UK in terms of uh, alternative music right now. Up, uh, up next will be Wargasm, which obviously the world is talking about right now. Um, Holding Absence just put out a great record this year as well, and they're uh, the, the main support. And so I feel like that, even without Creeper, that, that package is is mad. You're never going to see something like that with those bands again. Um, you feel pressure? You feel pressure when they're the bands that everyone's talking about? <laughs> I don't really feel that pressure because yeah. um, as much as I like, uh, I, I'm really excited about having all, all those bands on, like what we do is very different and um, we operate in a world of complete fantasy, you know, this is why I can't talk to you about exactly what we're going to do. Um, so like, I, I kind of feel like each one of those bands brings something completely fresh and different to the table as well. Um, so I don't, I don't see any of those bands in, in being in competition with each other at all. They may think they are, I don't think they do either, but, but um, I, even if they, they, they did, I, I don't really. I think Wargasm is very different to Static Dress and Holding Absence there, and like all, all of them are so varied. Um, so yeah, it's, that's one of the things I really like about it, how many different types of artists are performing. And Creeper's definitely very different from all three of those acts as well, you know? Um, it's, uh, you know, much more over the top, much more melodramatic, and we're, and we're going to more like a, a really broad um, Halloween pantomime this time around. So. <laughs> I think that's the thing is with Salem, I've seen lots of the fans saying they're going to come dressed as nuns uh, and priests because a lot of the artwork that you have, the fans love getting dressed up as well, which is all part of the theatre. Do you think there is going to be a particular theme for the Creeper Tour that they're all going to be going for? Or is it anything goes like in the realms of fantasy, whatever they want? I think uh, like, Creeper, you, you get people cosplaying as the characters quite a lot, but not just on this record, on the last one as well. Uh, um, we, like, we, and we really encourage that. I think it's really important to have a place where you can go and dress up and be yourself, you know? Um, I think that's what people need, especially after a pandemic when we've all been stuck inside. Everyone wants to dress up and be out there, get back out there. Like, um, so yeah, we're like, you know, people come dressed as Annabelle and Roe from this campaign just now, but also like Madeline, the stranger, and, and James Scythe have seen all sorts of cosplays. So it's... Uh, yeah, we, like Creeper really encourages that. It's something that um, a lot of people like to do with us. With Salem, it's really fun because obviously all the nun uh, and the priest stuff is a, a riff on um, what the Damned did uh, when they were doing the, the Strawberries record. Um, and it was Dave with the nuns on stage. And uh, so me and Charlotte obviously grew up, like it was my Charlotte, my girlfriend, obviously um, grew up loving the Damned and going to see the Damned when we were kids. And being obsessed and, and as soon as I had the idea I was oh the Church of Salem we should do you know the Dave Vanian thing um you know and have uh and have uh the, the, the nuns we asked stuff and Lauren to do it and so it's been it's been really fun and it's kind of a pastiche of uh, something that I think Dave was doing it as kind of a, a tongue-in-cheek joke as well at the time and uh, there's a homage to something cool um yeah and, and so I've already had a lot, a lot of nuns at these things uh which has been amazing and uh yeah I've got I've got my outfits with me as well um so it's uh yeah, it's, it's really, really cool. It's really fun. And I think like a punk show that can be interactive and you can dress up and go to is like, it's amazing. And that's, it, it's, it, it makes it more immersive than it would normally be. How do you balance the two bands? Obviously, because they are very different in the sense of what you're doing. You've got the different tours. There's been all of the writing and releasing music. How do you find the time to balance in both? It's difficult now. Uh, it didn't used to be because the, the Salem, this is the first Salem tour ever, which is why we've been so pleasantly surprised at how well it's done um so uh like like how busy the shows have been and how uh uh and the, the, the sheer response like like the other night in um we were in leeds the other night and it was just crazy like a really crazy show birmingham as well particularly crazy like just these mad shows and you're like well this is like a, a was just a, a thing for a laugh but it's a first tour and you don't know how it's going to be you know um but yeah like uh when we first uh, did it it was supposed to be speed for, for, for a laugh on the side and uh now when the world's reopened there seems to be a demand for both acts now um which we were i wasn't really anticipating it being as quite as um uh kind of resonating as much as it did you know um so yeah like it's it's odd uh it's it's hard to try and work it out if like i was to do another salem record i would have to carve out a big chunk of time now um and that's harder and harder to do as the world reopens and creeper the creeper schedule gets busier and busier um so yeah, I, I, I don't, <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. Um, I'm just trying my best to, um, to make sure I do the best, the best job I can. Um, and so like, this is ridiculous right now because I finished, this tour finishes on Halloween and uh, then I have a month 
basically a month until Creeper begins, but that's one month off after having a whole month away, you know? Um, I'm lucky today because I'm at home because we played in Huddersfield yesterday and um, I get the train back for this day off. But it's a rarity to be home midway through a tour, you know? <laughs> so, um, and especially one as grueling as this, it's been ridiculous, it's been so long. I kept looking at the, the, the laminate being like, how are we still on tour in the UK? <laughs> And like you actually got to do some washing, I think I saw on your social media, didn't you? Yeah. They suddenly thought about your gloves and had the horror when they realised about them. I know they, they're disg- they were disgusting. To be fair, like um, it was just one of those things where like there was no minute to do it because it was just a show every day. And uh, yeah, like Charlotte was at the show yesterday, and we were backstage, and she was like, "You need to take these home and put them in the washing machine. They're disgusting." So that's what I've done. I've cleaned up my my show clothes over there. And um, yeah, we can get back to smelling somewhat okay tomorrow, I guess. <laughs> now with Cre- Creeper and Salem, and the fact that obviously they are going to be intertwined because you're in both of them, when it comes to writing music, do you ever start writing a song for Salem and think that could work for Creeper or vice versa? Or do you always sit down knowing that something is going to be for either project? Well, I have collaborators for each one. So Matt from Salem, you know, writes in a very different way to how Ian from Creeper writes. Mm-hmm. And the only time it's ever happened was at the very beginning of um, Salem. I wrote a song called I Saw. Um, and it was made up uh, made up of tweets that um, Charlotte had put out on the internet over uh, over a year. Um, and it was just like shit she would write on the internet. And uh, I'd write this song around it on the piano and Matt uh, transposed it to guitar and put an arrangement together. But I originally had it uh, for, set for Creeper. But um, it just wouldn't have fit on the record we were making at the time. It was uh, Sex Definite for the Void was very ambitious in a different way um, and was doing a lot of different stuff. And it felt like it was a bad fit. So I kept it and I, but I really liked the song. And I was like, oh, I think this is a really cute song. And so we ended up using it for Salem instead. But um, that's the only time that's happened. I think now, like um, me and Matt's relationship in terms of like a, a, a singer and a songwriter and, you know, like uh, kind of collaborators is, is, um, is such that it wouldn't really, we don't write songs that would fit on a Creeper record necessarily. Even though Matt has worked with me and Ian in the past on certain um, Creeper songs, he I think he's got his own style for what he likes to do with um, Salem now. Like, a lot of the kind of 70s punk stuff is coming through more and more in our work with that, which it wouldn't necessarily do for, for, um, for Creeper. And Creeper like jumps in a million different directions. It's not quite as, um, as focused in terms of like, Salem's a punk band, you know? Um, Creeper can, kind of is a lot of things. Um, often changing and often to everyone's dismay all the time. <laughs> I still think my favorite ever comment was someone saying that it sounds like the monster mash um it was which a graveyard like, smash Jen. <laughs> like, that's not an insult why am I <laughs> offended by that like try harder <laughs> <laughs> well we, I've had it all over the years um and it's you know like I take them in my stride <laughs> but yeah a graveyard a graveyard smash is what we really want this is what we're aiming for each time you know <laughs> So this, this is our thing. This is our aim. I mean, you do get a lot of criticism. You also have the hugely devoted fans. As you say, how do you ignore the, the critics like when you're doing something as wildly ambitious as what you have done with Creeper, uh, when it is so theatrical, it is so flamboyant and people don't like it? Do you just use that to fuel what you're doing? You don't care or you just find it funny? I, I think I find it funnier and funnier. When, when I was younger, I used to get like really, especially when I first started making music, I was extremely sensitive about it, but you can't do the things that I, I do and make the things I make without uh, expecting some, some comments and things. But there's a really great quote from Rick and Morty, uh, which I always think about. And uh, it's, um, you know, your booze mean nothing because I've seen the things you people cheer. And uh, <laughs> often, uh, often that's what I feel like. When I see a comment like that, I go, I, I do a cursory glance at their social media. And realize that they like a load of bands that are rubbish and, and don't and just don't care. If it was like it would hurt more. I remember Marilyn Manson slagged off my chemical romance once, and they were they was just like, what, what, I don't understand why we, how we're supposed to be offended because you know if it was someone we respected, we would took care. Of, you know, like it would bum me out if uh, if Dave Banian told me my, my my band was rubbish or like I don't know like Davey Havoc or or, uh, or someone from um, like kind of this the sort of world that like um. Uh, it inspires me. Um, yeah. met, like a Matt Skeever of the world told me told me I was um, a hack or something. Uh, uh, but I, I, I it's, it's very difficult for me to take criticism from people, from someone who likes such rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so that's the alkaline, yeah, yeah. alkaline trio AFI, you would be offended. Uh, but yeah. Otherwise, you, 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 like, yeah, that's fine. I, I, I just don't care. Like, um, <laughs> and like you know, like I think the, like, that's the way you've got to be. Like, you'll never make anything if you try and worry about the opinions of people. People have more visceral and aggressive opinions by the by the hour on, on the internet, and uh, I just don't care. Like most most people aren't doing anything anyway, so it's like you know. I just, I'd rather be in my position than theirs most of the time. So it literally is, you go and make your own and then we'll talk. Like, we'll compare <laughs> well, and see come We're up. not even going to talk. <laughs> just, <laughs> just go and do something productive, I guess, is what my advice would be. Get a hobby, yeah. <laughs> Get a hobby that isn't slagging me off on the internet. So with the, the album that came out, obviously, during the pandemic, you've then released the EPs. You had American Noir and Sounds from the Void. Why was an EP the right format for these two, do you think? Well, I think um, like a Creeper album takes uh, an incredible amount of time to make. Um, I also feel like the, the sort of records that Creeper make are quite outdated in um, the current climate of the music industry. I had a really funny conversation with someone at a record label the other day he was um, suggesting that we just make singles. <laughs> and I was like, that's not what we do. Um, like uh, what we want to do is uh, elaborate concept records um, that are difficult to market in this day, day and age. We, not everyone wants to do collaborations with every artist under the sun, you know, like that. That's, that's the, the way things are going now, where it's like, we're all going to collaborate, we're going to put a series of singles. And But um, EPs made sense for this because um, we had a new drummer. I wanted to introduce him. To the, uh, to the audience. We had off cuts from the last record. It's American Noir is, as much as it stands on its own as a piece now, I think. Um, I also think it's like, uh, I don't know, like it, it's, it's off cuts from, uh, from, from the last record. It's kind of like a B-sides record in, in some ways. So it, it, made, it didn't make sense to, um, to line it up like an album, I suppose. And Songs in the Void uh, kind of sits like, that, that was stuff that we were trying to do to keep uh, to keep ourselves sane and our audience kind of sane on the way through uh, a time where we wouldn't be able to tour, you know, to give people a little something more. Um, so yeah, like I just, um, I, I like, like for me, uh, albums are always where it's at. Like uh, the, the, the Salem EPs made sense to do as well because I haven't just simply, it's a time thing. Like I, can't, I haven't got time to sit down and do a record. I'd much rather make a full album. Um, I, I, I prefer the, the ceremony of putting on an album to just blasting through singles on Spotify. But that's because I'm like, you know, getting older. <laughs> and I think my tastes are, are, are that of, I still have my, like my father's tastes in, in, in music and stuff, you know, like, um, I like, even when I was young, I was listening to records from the seventies because that's what I grew up with in my house. Um, so like all the glam rock records, I've listened to them from start to finish. And that's how I like to make records as well. And kind of, it, it feels like a, a journey when you complete something, you know, when you put on a record, watch a record, I listen to a record from start to finish and that's still what I do now. Like, um, so yeah, like I, I can't, I'm, I'm not really much of like the playlist generation. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, like EPs and albums make sense to me. I find singles hard. Um, the need for content constantly uh, that kind of curses most bands. I think it actually makes artists put out some of their worst material because people are rushing things to get them out. Um, I'd rather take my time, but what that often means is I have to remind everybody that we're still a thing every two years. We're still, <laughs> um, here. We're still going. Exactly. Um, but luckily we have a very devoted fan base that understands that and understands um, uh, our commitment to our craft and that when we, when we put something out, it's going to mean something. And uh, that a lot of thought and time has gone into it. Um, and it's not just uh, uh, cashing in on the latest fad and trying to adapt our sounds to sell records, you know? I think it's it's similar for me in that I grew up with my dad listening to Meatloaf constantly and you listen to that front to back it was never going to be something that would work on say TikTok nowadays when you've got like an eight minute long theatrical opus instead of the 30, 60, 90 seconds that people are used to um, and again I, again I think with Meatloaf it's not the sort of thing you would just pick out a single song it does tend to be you sit down and consume it in one go and I know that there were some people saying there obviously there were a lot of nods to that with yourselves with the, the latest album as well and as you say some people may say it's outdated but it's also something that I think there will always be an appetite for as well perhaps if people are sick of TikTok and things like that where it is such quick disposable do you think? Well yeah I, I'd like to think so um, and, I, and I meet a lot of people who are similar to you and I and who like at, at these shows who have 
a real um, hunger and like a, a yearning for that sort of time in music. When especially like it's hard to remember now, but like especially a lot, a lot of people maybe who were, who were you know reading this or listening to this uh, may not even have grown up with that. Like a time where rock, actual rock music was on the radio. Um, you know, like not not this kind of homogenized version of rock music, uh, like proper rock music. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's very different now. Um, and, and like I don't feel uh, I don't feel like uh, sad about it so much because i think all that all that stuff still exists i just think you have to go and you have to go find it now um and you, it's kind of more rewarding when you go and find something i think it's also what you're describing about listening to meatloaf but like for like uh these uh jim steinman songs are you know some of them can be like 10 minutes long you know uh like the original the, the full length bow of hell with the extended outro i think wraps up about nine minutes and i think that's really rewarding and when you find that that's really special i remember jim talking about a piece of advice he received once um, about the kid in Connecticut and uh, how uh, he was told to write music for this one kid, this fictional child in Connecticut, who um, he would imagine sat underneath, like, sat in his parents' house underneath his duvet with his headphones on, just listening to the record and, and, and noticing every little tiny nuance you put in. So, you know, with that kid in mind, like writing for that person. And I think that's to me, is, is really cool. And uh, yeah, I, I still think there is a great deal of people like you and I who have a hunger for that sort of thing. And um, it's not necessarily a nostalgia thing either. I think that that's the wrong way to look at it. I don't think it is to do with, oh, you know, I love the Sister Mercy. I wish everything sounded like the Sister Mercy. You know, I don't, I don't feel like that, and I don't feel, um, you know, it's not as meme worthy as it would seem. <laughs> I, I think, uh, <laughs> I think uh, it's just a yearning for something that uh, rock music means something that's not been uh, created with uh, an intent. To, to, to reach a, a broader audience as possible. It's difficult. <laughs> and sometimes punk rock should be difficult and rock and roll should be difficult, I think, and um, shouldn't always be easily digestible in 30 seconds and then disposed of immediately. You know, I think that um, the records that last the test of time and uh, are still around today from my parents' generation were always the more challenging ones. And now, getting someone just to listen to something that's 90 minutes long, like for an album is challenging on its own. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't feel a way about like what people listen to. I would never judge what someone's choices are just for me and, and what I make. Um, it doesn't suit my tastes to make something so short, you know? And you mentioned about you've got this incredibly dedicated fan base. I know you've been doing it recently on your social media where you've been doing these confessions. So you put up a question box on Instagram and people can unburden themselves uh, in your inbox, for lack of a better phrase. Uh, so with that, I know that you obviously only share some of the ones that you receive. Some of them are obviously very personal. Um, some can be very funny. Do you ever feel... Uh, responsibility for the fans like particularly if they are sending you things that are very personal that's saying that like they're relating to their sexuality their identity they've found a, a family within your fan base how does it feel dealing with that and also how did the idea sort of first come about well the idea came around because um we were thinking about um fun things to do around the church of salem stuff like we obviously we, we've been like when i get an idea for something i just it spawns a million different things and so we were obviously the church of salem was matt's wording for this the, the handle for salem on, online and then it was like well we can do this damn thing uh for the for the photos the strawberries thing and, and it, is, it splints off into those different ideas as all the best ideas do they start as one thing and they crack up like a, like you know smashing a window and they get they, they, they filter into different things and so i was like okay so what can we do that will be fun for this and i was like oh let's do a confession booth like like in the song we have that line about the confession booth and I was like, we could do this on on um, social media. Little did I know, like just how um, like just how much people really responded to it. I had the most responses to it I'd ever had. I've seen people do a similar thing before, but I think um, a lot of people that come to see us uh, have always been. We've always had instances where someone's come up to me uh, multiple times, even this tour, uh, to talk to me about their sexuality, like after a show, talk to me about um, uh, gender identity, um, things that like. They, people struggle with but they, they I think there's something within the music and, the, and we're in kind of both bands and there's, there's just stuff that I'm involved in like a lot of the stuff we play around with is being comfortable and confident in who you are and and, and what you're uh, being sex positive and um you know like uh like people find that in our music and then find a place they can go and, and be themselves and um I think that's incredibly important um uh, obviously I, I, I I've spoken about it a few times I went to the, the Catholic primary and secondary school when I was younger and a lot of the teachings that went on there were like obviously really um 
outdated and um, uh, quite sure they, they shame you for thinking, for, for, for having human um, feelings and thoughts, I suppose. And uh, I guess we're, I'm riffing on a lot of that with this as well. Um, it's kind of, um, it's funny. Um, and also, as you said, like some of them are really, really touching. Um, they're really, really nice. Some people just want a platform. They, like, they know that like when they submit this stuff, uh, the, the, the rest of the world is going to see it as anonymous. Um, and uh, when they do it, they, some people just want to shout into the void, you know? Like it, some people just want to shout, this is who I am, this is what I've been getting up to. Blah, blah, blah. There are some things that are like well not suitable for me to share <laughs> that go that I get sent sometimes. And uh, yeah, like some of the more risque ones, obviously, sometimes I'm like, oh, this is, this is spicy. Um, <laughs> but, um, it's, um, it, like, it's fun. And they know what they're doing when they send it to me. And so... As, as long as like that's like, they're okay with that it's cool um i always think and yeah like it, it's allowed people i think i get a lot of really really positive feedback about those things mm. a lot of people who feel the same way as people who are in similar situations sometimes i know for a fact when you're in a situation that's difficult um regardless of whether you're the, the person in the right or the person in the wrong it's very easy to feel um isolated on your own as well so being able to shout about it like just once every now and again like just go ah, and then stop. It's, it seems seems to be um, really quite cathartic for people. And um, at the moment, the world is still on fire. Um, and it, I mean, it's always been a little bit on fire, but it feels like it's the most on fire it's ever been. Um, so I think anything that makes people feel less alone, that makes the community feel better, um, and then coming out to these shows and being able to dress up and be who they want to be, you know, talking about coming out to your parents and stuff like that. And these some of those are the most touching ones to me. Um, and, uh, you know, someone, someone leaving the house, uh, you know, uh, wearing makeup for the first time or something like that. Like, uh, someone in a really bad, uh, a toxic relationship, who just needed someone like other people to go, no, you know what, get out of there, you know, stuff like yeah. that. I think it's important. I like there's a difficulty that comes with, it was responsible. There was a responsibility, I think, with, um, being in my position sometimes in terms of like, uh, I, I don't often answer DMs and things like that. I'm, I'm very much on purpose for my own mental health as well as uh, other people's. Um, also, I don't think it's always the most healthy thing to be getting into a long form conversation about something that I'm not, uh, you know, I, I, I've not been trained in and helping to deal with. But if every once in a while you want to come and just shout about something and then move on together and we can all, uh, we can all kind of help, help each other and it can be a cathartic place where we laugh at each other's kind of, uh, fuck ups and silliness and we, everyone can move on as a, as a unit I think that's quite cool and um I think you know I have I, I haven't had any negative feedback from it at all it's been really almost universally positive um so yeah like I, I've really enjoyed that like um every now and again someone goes what are you going to confess and I'm like I don't even know like um <laughs> but uh yeah I feel like everyone's le leading a much spicier life than me <laughs> 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 really going well I learned some things today yeah <laughs> and it's nice that they can share as you say it's giving this community it's giving this environment perhaps if they're in a small town somewhere and there are no other alternative people there it is giving people a home and it's giving people somewhere that they can explore as you say uh doing it in a in a safe space if it is going to be anonymous and then seeing other people's responses can make people feel less alone and that can only be a good thing absolutely um, so you've been doing the Salem project. I know that Ian has done his own solo music as well. Um, do you think you would ever do any other collaborations together in future? I know that he does a lot of the, the songwriting with you for Creeper, but would there be like a separate solo thing that either of you would do together, or are you keeping it both separate? Um, I don't know. I, I, like Ian's done this incredible record. I don't know if you've got a chance to hear it. It's really cool. Um, it, he's, he's been meaning to do it for years and years and years. And uh, I've been trying to encourage him to do it for like a lifetime. Like since I've known him, he's been a, such a brilliant uh, creative. Um, yeah. So, so like I went to his uh, art show the other day and, 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 and saw that. It was, and it was such a nice feeling to see him um, perform finally just on his own. There's a part of me as well that was just so worried because like, Every time something goes wrong, normally at a keeper show, like I'll just talk or like do something dumb to try and mask the problem for a while. Um, I was like, oh, shit, like, like there was a part of me that was just wanting to protect him. And I was at the same time, I was like, he doesn't need me to do that. Like, you know, like um, I, I think it's just about like us being such good friends for so many years. And um, yeah, like watching him absolutely, he was breathtaking the other night. He was really, uh, really, really special. And um, he, you know, what he's doing is, uh, is really uh, something very unique and, and and sits in its own place. Um, and I'm excited to see what more he does. He's actually playing up here in Manchester soon. 
So I'm going to go see him here. I think he might stay with me. Um, but yeah, like it's cool, like uh, him and, and like he's, he's come to see Salem on Halloween and we all are very supportive in our camp of each other's projects. I think like the one of the things uh, I was thinking about uh, was um, doing a, I, mean, I wanted to do a record of my own for ages as well, that exists outside of Salem um, with a, a very different sound. Um, but again, it's just trying to find the time to do anything right now. Like Creeper's about to get extremely busy again. Um, and Ian and like I think me and Ian are both going to struggle with our other projects as well because Creeper just uh, it's like a steamroller just takes over our entire lives and it will um, like no doubt um, touring for, with that is, is going to take a, up a lot of uh, next year. Um, but yeah, like if, if I had another pandemic, I would uh, I would definitely make some more records. Um, I would love to make another Salem record. I would love to work this thing out that I'm doing. I'm, I'm always working on a million different projects anyway, and in the background. But actually putting together a full record, it takes so long to do it, Jen. And like, it just does. You have to demo it all. And then like, uh, it's writing, writing it all, demoing it all, recording it all. Like, and it's just, there's this, such a process to it. And that's one of my favorite parts of it all. The like, um, you know, the uh, initial kind of, uh, the sewing together of all the different splints of ideas and, and things. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's trying to find the time to do that right now. I'm, I'm so busy. Um, I'm busier than ever because Salem, at the downtime I did have, Salem's now taking up. So, yeah, um, yeah it's difficult. But hopefully, I, I think me and Ian obviously are going to uh, be very, we, we creep, creep as kind of our babies. So um, it's that's our, our main collaborative place for the two of us now. In terms of how busy Creeper is going to be, do you think there will be any time to work on a, a new record or is it just going to be touring and playing the stuff from Sex, Death and the Infinite Void? Because I know there was the pandemic that kind of derailed that one, uh, but or any other plans for new music? Well, this is the thing. It's so difficult with Creeper to tell you what we're doing because I, I, I just can't. Um, uh, so it, like it's a, we're sworn to secrecy and that's one of the things I think people like about Creeper. I can be more transparent with Salem um, and it's kind of on purpose almost because the secrecy of Creeper um, is difficult sometimes. It's difficult to lead a regular life with so much secrecy involved. Um, I remember the time when, when we broke the band up and I, I came off social media for a year, um, which in this modern age, especially when you've like been a singer in a rock band uh, like that, like the day before, then suddenly not having any social media. And also with being the worst year of my life, um, like uh, it was crazy. Like it's watching, I, I felt like I was, peering out watching the world turn but not being able to be very, very involved in it um mm -hmm. but salem's allowed me to uh, be a lot more kind of transparent about what goes on and leave it like, like as a band that has a much more like when i've been on this tour i've been filming backstage a lot more than i would normally do with creeper um mm -hmm. even the creeper is like slowly the the, the you know things are, uh, are lifting slowly with that um but still we're very protective about what we do um we want we, we do everything with intent with creeper and um yeah, like I wouldn't want to ruin it for people who um, who who like the element of surprise so much. Um, so yeah, I can't tell you what we're doing with with Creeper really yet. Um, but there, there, there's a lot going on. I just um, just can't talk about it, <laughs> which is a, a journalist nightmare. I a lot of it is the mystery, isn't it? As you say, and that is part of the reason it has been so successful. And it has gone on for so long. I mean, I was at that Coco show when it all ended and you all walked to the front and dropped the leather jacket. So I remember when you walked off stage, there was these people just looking around going, what, like, what just happened? And it was as if it all just imploded. And I guess if they'd seen everything in the run up to it or if they'd seen rehearsals or seen you all with the jackets and stuff, it, it wouldn't have had the same impact. No, and, and these are the things, you know, like that show is so funny because it's such a, Creepers is so divisive in ev almost every way you cut it. Like uh, we have, uh, strong detractors and we have strong uh, like the strongest fan base of I think I would argue of, of, of most bands in this country like the, the the most amazing diehard creative people you ever meet everyone says their fans are the best fans in the world but they're not it, like I, I've never met a, a fan base like this before it's a rabid and we're known for it too it's not just me saying it um, and they are the best um, but that show as well even amongst our diehard fans was a divisive moment um, we got like a lot of people were really, really mad at us about that for a long time. Um, but like, that's again what I was talking to you about. Like, rock and roll should be should be should be scary. You shouldn't if you if you're feeling like um, you know everything that's going to happen. If everything you ask a band, like I see these, uh, I see kids talking to their favorite artists these days, and it's like it's as if these bands um, 
let, it's not a band it's like a, like a, a franchise of subway or something where they can have it exactly the way they want it all the time and it's like play this do this play here do and, and i think that's really wrong i think it like I don't think the listener knows what they want. I think like my favorite artists didn't write songs with me in mind. Yeah. Um, they wrote their best records when they were being artists and playing what they wanted to play and, and et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, people, uh, even the ones who were mad about that show, we had death threats after that. Like we had all sorts of stuff. Um, uh, but like it sticks in people's m minds and memories. I met someone just last night after the show who was talking to me about um, the impact that stunt had and how it like, it like got them really excited about music and, and you know, made them like look deeper into to our records, but also like, then they found David Bowie from that. And, 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 and like, you know, like, it's amazing. It's really cool. So I, I feel like that's one of the best things we've done. Um, it was a great piece of theater and, um, and, a, and a piece of real drama. You're not, you weren't going to get that going to see, you know, the, a, a regular band and you never know what you're going to get with Creeper. And I think that's what's important. That's why we're so protective over it. And it's kind of so shrouded in secrecy all the time. Um, because when the band does break up, I, I, it's going to have to be bigger than the Coco show now, you know? So I had to try no one will believe you. Ah, oh, you'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think I've cried wolf too many times now, Jen, you know? <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time today. And yeah, enjoy your day off. And I'm sure people have lots to look forward to for the, the Creeper show when it happens. Thank you very much for having me. It's lovely to speak to you again. And um, yeah, I'm going to try. I'm going to lay down on this sofa and sleep all day, I think. <laughs>